Back on Inside Tennessee with two Tennessee lawmakers in East Tennessee. Representative Johnson, you oppose the governor saying no to that extra $300 a week from the federal government for people filing for unemployment. Why? Absolutely. And because it's not, you know, those numbers aren't real. Um, uh, they don't show the whole picture because if you take rural counties, like you take a county like Clay County, there are something like three jobs for Clay County on that website and there are hundreds of people that are unemployed. And so when you look at our rural communities, there are not the offerings that they need. I am hearing from people every day that are terrified. They don't know how they're gonna make it without those extra dollars. And it's not that people are sitting home and living large on unemployment. They are trying to feed their fam families, trying to figure out childcare. Tennessee, much of Tennessee is a childcare desert. We have got to make we should have used some of the pandemic funds to uh, make sure that people had access to child care. The reality is uh, there are a lot of folks out there in professional jobs whose jobs haven't started back yet or haven't been able to find a job because where they worked before is not open yet and may not open. So the reality is sometimes it takes longer to, to find those jobs. And for most of those type jobs, 12 weeks, cutting unemployment to 12 weeks, that is not going to be enough time for you to take care of your family. And the reality is that those pandemic dollars that came down from the federal government added to unemployment are what kept Tennessee in business. People were able to spend that money to take care of their families, to pay their bills, to buy what they needed. And without that, it's just not going to happen. So the reality is child care is a problem for getting back to work. Um, those jobs aren't everywhere in every county. And they're also, everybody can't go be a long haul trucker. People are telling me the jobs that are on there are not things that they can do or that they're trained for or that you can do as a single parent. So the reality is, you know, we've got to get people back in jobs that work for their families. And if we're not going to pass um, health care and we're not going to provide uh, more daycare, then folks aren't going to be able to get back to work at lower wages jobs if we are not doing the, some, of the, some of the things that we can do to make it possible for them to get back to work. Don? So, Gloria, I'm going to change uh, topics while we're talking about troubling bills. And as I look through, uh, and I, I coined your phrase a few weeks ago, the, the slate of hate and some of the other things that came through, if there was a bill that worried me that was actually going to cost Tennesseans lives, I believe it was the quote constitutional carry bill. And I'll explain why very quickly. Uh, I think it's going to lead to more uh, police shooting people carrying maybe without ill intent. I believe it's going to lead to people misusing weapons for either lack of training or lack of responsibility. I'm curious to, I know of course you did not support that, but I'm curious to how you watched your colleagues across the aisle reconcile the we back the blue, we're strong on police, when every police agency in the state said this is a bad idea. How they reconcile that with the passage of this legislation? Honestly, I just have to say, they didn't care. We had one representative stand up when speaking to an officer and tell him to stand down. Um, you know, these folks who backed the blue sure weren't backing it and backing them in this instance. I mean, we had officer after officer tell us that it was going to make their job more dangerous. It was going to make it more difficult for them to do their job. And no one listened besides those of us who voted against that bill and knew the problems that it would cause. I mean, the reality is um, our permit system was working well. And we need to make sure that folks who are carrying have had some training. And um, this bill is not helping Tennessee. And you're right, it is going to cost lives. And so Jason, to you, take. right. I'm sorry, guys, say again. Your take on constitutional carry. Sure. Uh, yeah, I mean, guys, the bottom line is, is the Second Amendment tells us the right to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. It's a Second Amendment right. Um, you should be able to walk around, hey, show me your permit. I'll show you my permit. It's the Constitution. It's the Second Amendment. And so while, yes, the, an aspect of this bill allows you to be able to carry without a permit, 
the important thing to remember is that we already have laws on the books that allow you to carry a loaded gun in your car for protection, a loaded gun on your boat. We're now simply saying that my wife, who doesn't have her permit, I do, I carry everywhere, my wife does not. She can have a weapon in her purse. If she's out at night, she goes from the car to Walmart. She's a law-abiding citizen. She's had a background check to be able to get that weapon. And so she's legal able to, legally able to carry it. And so if you are legally able to own and own a weapon, now you're able to carry it. We've just removed that, that requirement that you have to have a permit to be able to do that. The permit system is still in place for reciprocity. But the most important aspect of this is we greatly enhance the penalties for lawbreakers. Because a criminal, here, the reality is a criminal is going to carry a weapon, whether we have a law on the a, a, a law on the books or not. They're a criminal. They don't care what the law is. They're carrying their weapons. Law-abiding citizens are the ones who are affected when you say that you have to have this permit to carry. So we greatly enhance the penalties. If you steal a weapon, you're going to jail. If you use a weapon illegally in a crime, you're going to jail for a long time. We've added felonies to these. And most people leave that part out. And in terms of law enforcement agencies that don't support the bill, that certainly there were groups here lobbying against that that were law enforcement agencies. But I can speak to the law enforcement guys that I know, the guys there in Knoxville, the guys that work for our sheriff's department that fully support this because they support the right of legal law by law abiding citizens to protect themselves. Again, criminals are going to carry no matter whether there's a law in the books or not. Most law-abiding citizens are going to say, gosh, if I can't, if, if it's against the law, I'm not going to do it. Plus, the final thing is that if a business posts and doesn't want you to carry, then you're not allowed to carry. All that stayed in place. We're simply reinforcing our constitutional rights by revising our permit system and not making it a penalty if you choose to carry one to protect yourself. We've got to well, take a Well, that's interesting, break. Jason. Yeah. We've I was going to say, that's break, interesting, break, Jason, because I'm around all those police officers, too, and that's not what I'm hearing. We're gonna we're gonna Sorry. break and we'll be back. And Susan, I don't know what to you'll tell pick you. us up. <laughs>